Cruiser Ninko. Ninka. And move! July 20th, San Diego Comic-Con. You're going to see the inner geekdom champion, Rachel the Crusher Cushing. She will put that title on the line, and it will be against... That's right, the smasher, Kevin Smets or Mike Kalinowski, who will win. We're two matches away from a championship belt. I'll make sure Kalinowski lives up to his name, KO, when I knock him out. You got this new breed that's come on up here, and, and they're bringing their A game. But they're just beginning, and Kalinowski's going to be the one taking on Rachel and San Diego. You're bumping the road in my title. Comic-Con, that's the next defense is going to be. That's where we're going to be on the other side of that table, getting that belt back. If he wants to lose for a fourth time to me, bring it. July 20th, Saturday. You can get tickets right now at the Schmodown Live. That's the one. If you want to make that call and putting that all into your choice, your power, your call. 100%. 100%? Yes. yes. All right. Oh. Hey, Geek hey. Tensi. Uh, What's up? How you doing? I'm, I'm all right. Doing, yeah. How are you guys doing? Nice to see both of you. Yeah. Have you uh, made your decision yet? Mm -hmm. We have. Um, representing corruption in the manager bowl decided to choose Stacy Howard. Oh, wow. Okay, Stacy Howard to, to represent. You said there yes. was some surprise. No, 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 no that's great. I'm actually thrilled because oh. I like Stacy. She's very level-headed. Mm -hmm. right. uh, if she wins, I'm perfectly fine with her, you know, being the boss running things. That's great. Oh, you, you think she'll be the one, it the only one us. running? Yeah. Really? No. You're? No. You'd be working for us. Mark that down too. Put that in your All right, Stacey Howard. Pad of paper. Done and done. Hey, um, mm -hmm. did you break into my car? Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. Breach of trust, but I don't. You know her from her wrestling podcast, Tights and Fights, writer, actress, comedian, host, and she is here today to call this match with me. Danielle, we have a four-way. Have you ever been involved in such a thing? A four-way? Not that I can talk about <laughs> on camera. <laughs> well, this is going to be a very interesting four-way because if you are attempting a four-way at home, it's always a risk when you have two rookies involved in said four-way, <laughs> and that is exactly what we have today. Let's talk about the competitors that we know of because we have Brandon Hanna going to be making his inner Geekdom debut today, as well as Sean Drew Dondapani is going to be making his debut here. So what we have, Danielle, is we're looking at the rookie experience first and foremost. What does a rookie have as far as their mentality going into something? like this because John Drew, look, he had to prove himself to the chairman, Emma F uh, to Christian Harloff, excuse me, Brandon Hanna had to prove himself to Emma Fife. They're climbing the ranks from being a fan, from being an intern for Ben Bateman in Brandon's case. What are they looking at going into this match here today? I mean, first of all, you just want to make sure you don't embarrass yourself, right? It's You can be as great at trivia when you go and hang out with your friends on trivia nights. You can be great yelling back at the screen at Jeopardy. <laughs> it is completely different when you get here and you get underneath these lights and your foundation starts melting. That's not talking about anyone in particular. That's never happened to me. Words of wisdom from Danielle Raver. Don't let your makeup run and don't suck when you get under the white hot spotlight. Now, <laughs> don't suck. Don't suck. Keaton don't Markey suck. Uh, has not sucked in the Inner Geekdom. As a matter of fact, she is currently ranked in the top 10. She has a 1 and 2 record. She has a TKO to her credit. She was in a Fatal 5 way last year, so I think that knowing the format of how these big matches works has got to be suited to her strength here. Absolutely. And that's no, there's nothing inner geekdom. So I believe this might be my first inner geekdom match. Oh, well, welcome it. to the crew. Thank you. Um, this is when they say inner geekdom, they are not playing around. <laughs> if this is something you can get in the top ten of, I tip my hat, I salute you, I tip my wig to you because <laughs> these questions are some not effing around questions. Yeah, we were taking a look at some of the questions uh, beforehand, and it's again, if you're a rookie, whether you're on the desk or you're you're asking the question, the inner geekdom can be a challenge, but let's go to the pregame interviews with the competitors. Take a look. And now we know that in that fatal four-way, 
is going to be Chance. Surprise, surprise. Look who's here. What am I doing That's here? That's right. I'm bringing back Keaton Markey. Hey, it's Keaton Magic Markey, and I'm back. Oh, I'm so excited to be back. I can't wait to get back in there and compete. So we've got Chandru. What's up, Internet? I'm Chandru Dandapani, and I'm the Zeitgeist. Brandon Hanna, the, uh, the return of old uh, Boss Baby. Greetings, movie trivia Schmodown fans. It's Brandon, the hitman Hanna. The Cobra took a bus, a train, and a plane to come ruin all of your inner geekdom dreams. We have Brandon the Hitman Hannah. I love this kid. I've seen him. He's done great things behind the scenes, like get my coffee, uh, get a muffin for RB3. I've been working behind the scenes. I know this league better than anybody. I've been in here. I've been in this studio before. I know what it's about, and I'm ready to get the win. And then we got Shandrew who's coming in here. Shandrew? Brandon Hannah? I'm sure he's just getting coffee for him and like carrying his briefcase and too busy to do all of his trivia knowledge studying, so I'm not too worried about him. He's just a fan coming from the sidelines. I have met him uh, in the crowd watching and wishing he was a part of it. Well, Chandra, your wish just turned to a nightmare because the Cobra is here to ruin all your dreams. Oh, the magic marker? I'm not worried about her. She knows like Harry Potter and Disney. Disney's not even in Inner Geekdom. Wait, what? Oh, Magic Marquee. Keaton, Magic Marquee. She's a ball of energy. You just gotta kind of go in there with a positive attitude, ready to play the game, and you know, have fun. A nice little ball of sunshine, but there is no place in the Inner Geekdom for that. Dark and gloomy right here. Listen, I respect her as a competitor. She clearly knows her stuff, but I mean, she's just in the way. I'm gonna do what a hitman does. I'm gonna take her out. You know, to all the new competitors, I've been a newbie before. I know it's intimidating. From my past matches, I've learned so much. I've competed against some of the biggest competitors and lost terribly, but at the same time, been the underdog and won. It's about spreading my dominance throughout this entire league and putting everyone everywhere on notice if they aren't already. I'm here in the movie trivia Smodown because I want to show how geeky the modern culture is and I'm coming for that thick belt. You know, someday down the road, I will win one of those titles. Just wait and see. I'm gonna take that belt. I'm gonna take this league by storm. I'm Brandon, the hitman Hannah, and I'm coming for you. You didn't know who was coming for you. Boo, <laughs> we're here. When you look at somebody like a Brandon Hanna or like a Chandra Dandapani, they're going into this with a lot of confidence. Do you think that that's false hope or do you think that they're trying to pump themselves up? Do they really believe in themselves? Look, I think that that's exactly what you need. Fake it until you make it. You cannot <laughs> show a sign of weakness here because your other competitors are going to start using that to needle you and they're going to get in the cracks in your armor and they are going to make you feel like a terrible, horrible person who doesn't know things. And Keaton Markey is showing the confidence that we've come to expect from her. Danielle, I must ask you because this is your first inner geek to match are you ready to go i am ready then it's time for the movie the trivia, trivia it's like we practiced that that was it's really like good we did that. look and i said snow down this time <laughs> look you I'm put the m in there we're learning so proud and, of you learning and growing learning and growing introducing first With a record of zero and zero, making his inner geekdom debut, please welcome Brandon, the Hitman, Hannah! You see a briefcaseless Brandon, but he does have the suit style and profile in Danielle. Is everyone shopping at the same student store? Yeah, What's happening? Looking very polished, looking very Joseph A. Banks salesman, Brandon Hannah. Oh, I want to see that face on a bench. I want that face to help me buy a house. <laughs> and his opponent, with a record of 0-0, zero and zero, also making his inner geekdom debut, John Drew, the zeitgeist, <laughs> Not since Antonio Brown dancing in a Pizza Hut commercial have I seen that move pulled off so well. John Drew all smiles, Brandon all business, and their opponents 
representing the Popcorn Network with a record of one and two, the 2018 Inner Geekdom Quarter Finalist, Keith Magic Marquis. There's Keaton, also got a little dance, a little pep in her step. Look at the confidence on Keaton. Keaton comes in strong. Shaking hands. Being very sporty, everybody see the I wish there Hannah. was. I wish there was a baby for her to kiss. I feel like she would kiss that baby. <laughs> she should be running for office, and perhaps she will get some votes if she can pull off the win here today. And finally, representing corruption, <laughs> making his inner geekdom debut, led to the ring by his manager, the Cobra Champ. Very interesting here, Danielle, because Emma, after Chance's last win, said, oh, you get you getting cocky, getting mouthy. We're going to throw you into the inner geekdom and see how you fare, and we're about to witness that here today. So we have three rookies, and Keaton Markey all of a sudden looking at this swell of opponents like I have more experience than all of them combined, Danielle. Uh, absolutely, and hopefully we don't get her mixed up with any of the other redheads in black that just came in. <laughs> um, it's a lot I, of black I, leather and red hair. Look, I worry that one of them is going to drug her and try to replace her with themselves. <laughs> this so could be watch a your trap level switch. Here. Alex Marzona is paying close attention <laughs> to everybody who is up at the desk. Competitors, this is a four-way qualifier in the inner geekdom. I'll tell you all how round number one works. You're going to hear questions from different corners of the inner geekdom galaxy. These questions are ten. Deep. Each question is worth one point. The question is asked to the field. So as soon as you hear the question, please write down your best attempt at an answer on the whiteboard in front of you with the marker that Danielle herself brought to the studio. Thank you for those markers. Oh, Danielle. you're very welcome. I just had them laying around <laughs> on my whiteboard at home where I put the names of my enemies. You will have, that's interesting. You will have about 15 seconds to write down your answer. Once we ask you by name to reveal your answer, please show what you wrote on the whiteboard to your camera at the same time you verbalize your answer into the microphone. Please try to write as legibly and as big as humanly possible. Like I said, each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question in round number one. There is no stealing in round number one. Each competitor throughout the three round match has three usages of the JTE rule. So if you need to buy yourself some time or you didn't hear a question correctly, ask us for a JTE rule. We will repeat it. You also each have one challenge to be used throughout the duration of the match. Chance Ellison, good to see you. Good to see you, too. Are you prepared and ready to go here in your first Inner Geekdom bout? Let's get it. I appreciate that he's going with the full Marvel labelless hat plus sunglasses. <laughs> I almost didn't know it was you. <laughs> <laughs> Incognito. Keaton, Markey, are you ready to go? Yeah, let's do this. All right, Chandra, this is your first time here. Are you feeling okay? Whatever it takes. And Brandon <laughs> Hanna, you ready to go, sir? Ready to comply. Then let's get ready to schmodown! <laughs> All right, your first question will be administered by Miss Danielle Radford. Danielle, at your ready, what category are we looking at? All right, question number one. We are in the category of the MCU. In the MCU, which of Nick Fury's eyes is covered by a patch? Uh, that's that's kind of like a 50-50. Uh, yeah, not, you really not, just I, write I, down any... I believe the man has two eyes, so it's one or another, Ooh. five. Four, if it's a one-third chance, three, you really messed up. Two, one. Pens down, go to chance. His left. It is, in fact, his left eye. Did Keaton have it? No. She had the right eye to Chuck. Left. He did have left in Brandon. Right. Okay. 50-50. There, there it is. <laughs> 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 I, know. I was like trying to like mirror image. Uh. Your next question comes from the world of Star Wars. Star Wars, and your question is, what main color is the speeder that Anakin pilots during the Coruscant chase at the beginning of Attack of the Clones? The, the, the main primary color, it's maybe not is a primary color, but the primary color of the speed. Yeah, if, it was, if it was shoes and it was a colorway, then you would know that this is the main color. You start talking about shoes and I do a countdown. Five, four, <laughs> three, Repeat the two. Repeat oh, JTE rule for Chandra, what main color is the speeder that Anakin pilots during the Coruscant <laughs> chase at the beginning of Attack of the Clones. The 
main color. I said main color. That's better. There we go. Go to five, four, three, two, one. Go to Keaton first. Yellow. It is, in fact, yellow. Did you have it, <sighs> yellow. sir? He did have yellow. The JT yellow. rule pays off. Brandon has yellow and chance. Yellow. He's got yellow across the board. This is when I say what I mean. These questions are not effing around questions. Question number three in the topic of Middle Earth. What alias does Frodo use at the Prancing Pony? So if uh, they open a bar called the Prancing Pony in LA, do you think it gets swamped by inner geekdom enthusiasts? Uh, either those are furries. Five, four, three, two, one. It'd be an interesting mixer. Pens down. Chandru? Bag. That is incorrect. <laughs> does Brandon have it? Underhill. We can accept Underhill. Did Chance have Underhill? Stan. <laughs> it is not Stan. Does Keaton have it? Bill the Pony? <laughs> it's a, all good efforts, but only Brandon comes out on top. So he <laughs> emerges as the early leader and the only one to maintain That's a perfect one. round. So if Brandon can somehow get the next seven questions right, he will get asked a bonus question. But we uh, got a long no, way to go. Right. He missed one. He missed one. Long way to go. He did miss a question. Never mind, Brandon. You will not get a bonus <laughs> no enough. matter what happens. You're still a failure. Your next question. <laughs> this is in the world of DC movies. DC movies. Who plays Detective? Detective Tom Lone, the love interest, in 2004's Catwoman. My Omas favorite movie. I believe that's what Halle Berry won her Oscar for? I believe so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Doing my research correct? Oh my god. <laughs> that's, a, that's a deep end of the library of DC5. I'm sorry, Rachel. Four, you missed this three, one. That's how I know it. Two, one. Pens down, Brandon. Did you have it? I have no idea. James Marsden? It is not James Marsden. Good guess. Does Benjamin Bratt. It is Benjamin Bratt. Did Keaton have it? Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. <laughs> better movie. Bang born himself, Benjamin Bratt. Okay, Ooh. so John Drew yeah, and Chance. Sexy basketball player there. That's how we know who does that. Uh, uh, uh. Benjamin Bratt, he uh, had a broken back, but still playing hoops in Doctor Strange. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we move on to the world of Marvel movies, and for that, we go back to you, Ms. Radford. Okay, number five. Who played Ben Grimm, a.k.a. The Thing, in the 2005 and 2007 Fantastic Four films? Reaching deep into the... Oh my God. Deep into the bargain bin with these last two questions. I love it. I live in the bargain bin. Like we're at a red box right now. I am the bargain bin. Five, four. I was born from it. Three, two, one. Pens down, chance. Loved him on the shield, Michael Chiklis. It was Michael Chiklis. Did Keaton have it? Michael Chiklis. Yes, she does. Michael Chiklis. Chandra's got it. Does Brandon? Michael Chiklis. Points across the board. Fantastic. So Chance and Chandra with a one point advantage over Brand, uh, Brandon, who himself has a one point advantage over Keaton. As we move to your sixth question in round number one, Harry Potter movies. <laughs> Harry Potter <laughs> movies. <laughs> have a couple Harry Potter fans here today. What's that? In the Harry Potter franchise, what does it mean when a remember all turns red? What does it mean? Remember all. Sounds like something you take for your bladder. It sounds like something you take to counteract the effects of something else. <laughs> Five, four, like drinking a lot of soda. Three, <laughs> two, one, pens down, Keaton. You've forgotten something. That is correct. She did not but forget that. forgotten something. The Chandra's got it too. Did Brandon remember it? I had no idea. <laughs> oh, you forgot. Chance. You've, You've forgotten for something. <laughs> He's got it. Uh, Chance got it. it. it did Brandon uh, <laughs> did not remember all. Am I right? Hey, oh. No. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I'm a, the worst. So his tie is tie's like a remember all because it's turning red. <laughs> <laughs> all right, question number seven in the world of Star Trek. Star Trek, the motion picture, was released in what year? You know, you can't get away with calling movies like something the motion picture anymore. It just doesn't, people don't buy it. People don't buy it. I would love to see them do that. I like, want to make something work. Doctor Strange 2, the motion picture. I would love to see Batman, the motion Five, picture. Four, <laughs> three. Two, don't, don't tend Matt Reeves. One, pens down, go to you first, Chandra. 1979. It was 1979, does Brandon have it? 1979. Much like the guy he used to intern for, he knows his movie release date's his chance. Year off, 78. Okay, oh. chance missed it. Does Keaton have 1979? <laughs> 2015. I was thinking of a new one. I was thinking of a new one. <laughs> Just a bit outside. The it's fine, it's fine, oh. it's fine. All right, Keaton, let's see if you can rebound with the DCEU, oh, which, which, which was around in 2015. <laughs> Who plays the villain, Dr. Thaddeus Savannah, in Shazam? 
I like to put a little gusto when I say Shazam because well, of the exclamation point. It's got the exclamation point. Shazam! 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 Remember when that was just an app that would tell you what song was playing in a bar? Five, four, three, <laughs> Repeat two. the question, please. Uh, okay, Brandon using his first JTE rule. Who plays the villain, Shh. Dr. Thaddeus Savannah, in Shazam? Shazam. Brandon, see if his JT rule pays off like Chandra's did. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Brandon, did you have it? Mark Strong. He does have Mark Strong. Just chance. Mark Strong. And Keaton? I just saw it, but the creepy thin man. The creepy thin <laughs> man. Right. He cannot accept that. Chandra, do you have Mark Strong? Do you remember when he played Sinestro? I do Mark remember Strong. when he played Sinestro. <laughs> That's a great deep cut. And Chandra gets a point for that. So looking at the score right now, Chandra takes a one-point <sighs> lead over Chance, who has a one-point lead over Brandon, who has a two-point lead over Keaton. So everybody feeling each other out here in round number one as we go to our penultimate question, Danielle. OK, number nine in the world of heroes and villains. Who does Doc steal the plutonium from in Back to the Future? Not the most politically correct question we've ever asked. Definitely not. Let's Neither. not make it worse. <laughs> let's, just, let's just get the answers and move on to the next question. Move right along. Don't worry about commenting here. Five, four, I'll three. Uh, let's, let's prolong this question. <laughs> for the best. Definitely for the best. Who does Doc steal the plutonium from in Back to the Future? I mean, I would still say Back to the Future. I think maybe the most fun movie of all time. Maybe the most fun movie of it's all time. It's just so damn It's enjoyable. that and Showgirls. Five, four, I'm sorry, what? Three, two, one. Pens down. We're going to you first chance. Oh, me? The Libyans. It was the Libyans. Does Keaton have it? The Russians. Oh, not the Russians. I thought the Russians do. It's not Russians. Does it's the Libyans. It is, in fact, the Libyans. Two points are awarded, and we move on. I thought, I thought that's what they were. For the Libyans. Uh, the for the Russians, rest of the time. Libyans, but All right. We apologize to any Libyans or Russians who are watching the program. <laughs> Your next question in the world of mixed bag. Mixed bag could be anything. Your question is, in Kingsman, the Secret Service. Oh. The young trainees must care for what type of animal before being tested to kill it? Whew. I, 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 maybe I just blocked that out of my I mind. I feel like I definitely Kingsman, blocked the Secret that out Service. of my mind. I will not be watching that movie again <laughs> if that's... Go to five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, go to Keaton first. A puppy. It is a puppy. Does, does Chandra have it? I took a guess with the unsullied, but puppy, yes. He got the puppy. Does Brandon? Dog. A dog is a puppy. Dog. It is a dog, yeah, not dog. a puppy. And points are awarded across the board, Danielle. That we, closes out round number one. We all know which pet would be the one that we would all feel the worst about. If yeah, was, right. If I mean, if it's a cat, uh, you know, it's just a Tuesday for some people. So we move to Chance Ellison and Chandru enjoying a eight point. Round number one, very impressive. Inner Geekdom debuts for both of them, and for Chandra, it's his first time on the desk in any match. They have eight points apiece. Brandon Hannah trails them by one with seven, and Keaton Markey bring up the rear as of right now with four points. But as we know, round number two is where the wheel comes in to play the wheel of doom, fate, and for all competitors, justice. This is a four-way qualifier, so each and every competitor is going to get a spin at that wheel. Once you settle on your category, you're going to be asked individually four questions from that category. Each question's worth two points. There's no penalty for missing a question. However, there is stealing available in round number two. Because this is a four-way qualifier, here's how the steal works. You're going to ask a question to one competitor. If they don't have it, I need the other three competitors to write down on the whiteboard their best attempt at an answer, and then we'll play it like round number one. Also, if you are asked a question you're not sure of the answer to, you can ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. So, Keaton, you are currently trailing, so we're going to go to your opponents, Chance and Chandru, who are tied with eight, and Chance, because you are sitting in the favorite's chair, you're going to have the option as to whether you'd like to spin that wheel first or would you like to defer to one of your opponents. Before I get your answer, you can think about it, <laughs> because the Wheel Slice is sponsored by a patron for the movie trivia <laughs> showdown. Thank you for your patronage. The sponsored wheel slice is Harry Potter. So if somebody spins Harry Potter, we know Harry Potter is straight for a number of these competitors. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to say the name of said patron. Thank you for your support of the movie trivia showdown. Chance, I bought you some time. What's your answer? <laughs> I'll go first. He is going to go first. All right. Go and spin the wheel. You can be gentle with it. Could you not move the table when you go up there? Thanks. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Calm. Yeah. Be very gentle with that wheel. Everybody see how Chance spun it? You don't need to spin it that hard. <laughs> 
I think the wheel was intimidated by Chance's sunglasses. Oh. DC oh. movies. Okay, Chance, uh, do you want to use your mulligan or do you want to stick with the world of DC films? Okay. He's going to spin again. <laughs> Much more gentle this time. And he's walking away. away. And he's walking away, yeah. much yeah, like one it. walks away from an explosion in a movie. I was going to say like a cowboy leaving a saloon, but yours was more underneath them. Oh. MCU movies. Okay. Chance is stuck with MCU movies, and to administer your questions is going to be my partner in crime, Danielle Radford, at your ready, milady. Okay. In the world of the MCU, what is the name? of the planet where the soul stone is hidden in Infinity War. Voromir. That that's is correct. pretty impressive. Yeah. That's, uh, that's two points for you, sir. Speaking to Loki, finish Volstagg's quote from 2011's Thor, what happened? Silver tongue turned to words. Gonna give you a countdown at five, four, three. Multiple choice. Is it A, ash, B, steel, C, lead, or D, mush? Ash. That is incorrect. So for the steel, we need our competitors to write down. We're gonna give you a little bit of time. If everybody's finished, then we're gonna go for a one point steel per person. Keaton, did you have it? Lead. It is, in fact, lead for a point. Lead. That's a big steal. Chandra got it as well. Lead. As did Brandon wow. as he looked at Chance. Did you see the look across the desk? That was a flex. Woo. Right. It is. Getting nice. a little hot in here. Good thing I wore my leather jacket. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, on to the next question. What pet does Ivan Vanko, played by Mickey Rourke, Keep demanding be returned to him in Iron Man 2. I want my board. It's a very good impression. That's very good. It's well, and it's, and it's so, correct and for two points. And it happens points, to be so. right. Wouldn't it have sucked if it wasn't? That's a, <laughs> all that ah, work. You just go off that leap and then just pew. All that work to nail that accent. <laughs> all right, Chance Ellison currently has 12 points, and he's got one more question in round number two. In what area of New York City do Hulk and Abomination do battle in The Incredible Hulk? Harlem. Two more points for Chance Ellison. That's an impressive run in the world of the MCU. As we move on to Chandru, you are now able to spin the wheel if you'd like to, or you can defer to either Brandon or to Keaton. I will defer. Okay, Brandon, do you want to spin or do you want to defer to Keaton? I'll spin. Brandon's going to step All up. All right. Going to give it a spin. Keep it gentle like a lover. All right. Brandon well, Hanna. That, that was not gentle like a lover. Giving a spin. Yeah, I feel like he's trying to sell us this wheel. <laughs> All right. I, you know what? I'd buy it. DCEU movies. How are you feeling? <laughs> well, the DCE. He's going to stick oh, with all it. All right. Ooh. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Brandon, your first question in the world of DCEU in a slate of four here. In Aquaman, who played Volko, Orm's advisor, and a friend to Arthur? Willem Dafoe. Two points. <laughs> All right, your next question. In Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, the film is set how many months after the events of Man of Steel? Multiple choice. Is it A12, B16, C18, or D22? 22. That is incorrect. So for a steal for one point, each competitor has about 10 seconds left now to write down their best attempt at an answer. A12, B16, C18, or D22. Pens down, start with you, Chance. 18. One point for Chance. 18. And for Keaton. 18. And for Chandra. That's a big Woo! steal. All right, so Brandon, back to you for your penultimate question in round number two. Your question is, who helps Superman Evacuate the villagers during the climactic battle in Justice League. The Flash. Two points for Brandon Hanna. He's back on the correct answer and train. All right. I, I, I hate this next question, but I will ask it. Oh, no. Your question, last one in the world of DCU. 
In what category did Suicide Squad win an Academy Award? <laughs> Makeup. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know why he knows it, but he does. That is two <laughs> points for Brandon Hanna. See, there's someone who knows you can't let your foundation run. The Suicide Squad, it is an Oscar-winning film. All right, Chandra, back to you. Would you like to spin, or would you like to defer to Keaton? Uh, I'll defer. Okay, Keaton, okay. you are up. Keaton Markey currently trailing with six points, but as we've seen already, you can accumulate a lot of points in a hurry in round number two. <laughs> and there's the spin. That's the, that's the best spin yet in Easily terms of the preserving the wheel. We're going to respin. Oh, we respin it, she's saying. Okay. And there is the spin. All right. There it is. No there whammies, Keaton. No whammies. Gentle. Is it going to be Harry Potter? It could be Star Wars. Oh. So it's Star Wars okay. for Keaton. Okay. We'll do it. All right, Keaton. Smack more talk is happening. Four questions <laughs> in the world of Star Wars to be administered by Miss Radford. In the Phantom Menace, what is the name of a Gungan submarine? Multiple choice, please. <laughs> is it A, Bonga? Is it B, Bongo? Is it C, Tonga? Tanga? Or is it D, Tonga? <laughs> Any of these could be right. <laughs> um, let's just say B. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Hey. Uh, Misa Pipa get a bongo. You know, the harder you work, the luckier you get. For one point, Keaton pulling off the impossible naming a Gungan submarine. <laughs> I told y'all, not messing around questions. In A New Hope, what is the full name of Luke's best friend from Tatooine? You need the first and last name. Full name. Oh, definitely multiple choice on this one. Is it A, Brig Starkiller? B, Owen Lars? C, Owen Darkwalker, or D, Biggs Darklighter? Uh, Owen Mars. That is incorrect. So for the steal and one point, looks like all the competitors have written down their answer. So Chance going to go to you first for the steal. Biggs Darklighter. It is Biggs Darklighter for one point. Does Chandra have it? Biggs Darklighter. He does, Brandon. Biggs Darklighter. All right, we see again, stealing is really coming into Fine. play here Fine. in this four-way qualifier, Danielle. Every opponent of Keaton's got the one point. She was not able to guess her way around that one. Can she do it in her third question? Well, let's find out. In Revenge of the Sith, who advises Anakin to, quote, train yourself to let go of everything you fear to lose, end quote. Um... Palpatine. That is incorrect. And now it's a two point steal. All right, competitors. Going to go to five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Chandra, go to Obi -Wan? you. Obi-Wan? It is not Obi-Wan. Does Brandon have it? Yoda. Yoda, the little Muppet for two points, didn't, is correct. Chance did not have it. So Brandon Hanna. <laughs> now, see, I would have guessed Eminem. You're That's welcome. right. <laughs> you got to lose Thank yourself you. in the moment. The music, the moment. You gotta you never, never let, let it go. Go low, and uh, Keaton Markey right now in danger of being eliminated. All she needs to do is, if she doesn't get this question right, that's fine. She just can't have Brandon Hanna be the one hmm. that steals it, or else she will be eliminated. She can still steal my things. Like, not that that's gonna happen, but she wouldn't be eliminated. That's a good point. Oh. You're so sweet when you try to like you know, be mean. <laughs> that's right, Chandra, really helping me out with the rules, really but hard. also throwing a little bit of shade Keaton's way. I, I uh, like this kid. It's a rose with thorns. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> In The Force Awakens, what is the name of the planet that is home to Mez Kanata's castle? Oh my god, I should know this. Just give me the multiple choice. Is Don't it worry. A, Cardota, B, Ratio, C, Takodana, or D, Quartzilius? Quartzilius. It's incorrect. <laughs> And so for a steal, you repeat on the options? I will repeat the options for you. Card <laughs> I'll try it. <laughs> Not as good as Danielle did. Is it A, Cardata, B, Ratio, C, Takadana, or D, Quartzilius? You can simply write down one of the four first letters of the alphabet. <laughs> Pens down. Uh, Brandon, did you have it? I believe it? it's C. It is C, Takadana. I had A. 
He had A, so Stop chance of no points, but Chandra does have it, so now we find ourselves in a situation where we, we cannot eliminate Keaton Markey yet, because there is the possibility, however much Chandra doesn't believe it could happen, that she could steal one of his points and manage to pull within 10. However, she's trailing by more than 10 going into round number three. It will be a three-way race for this win. Okay, so Chandra, now you got to step up and spin the wheel. And I will say this. Because it's your inaugural time. He doesn't need to oh, get it from knows. the wheel, not the pegs. He knows it. It's fun to watch a competitor spin the wheel for the very first time, Danielle. Mm. Never gets old. It's heroes like seeing someone at their first makeout party. And villains. Heroes and villains. He's going to keep heroes and villains. Okay. All right. Here we go. In the world of heroes and villains, your first question. The Ring Race, or Black Riders, were also referred to as what in the Lord of the Rings trilogy? Nazgul. Give the man two points. <laughs> Very impressive. Lord of the Rings knowledge, and your next question in round number two. In 2012's The Avengers, yes. <laughs> what mark number of the Iron Man suit did Tony use in the Battle of New York? Seriously? <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's on the computer. It's a question. No. <laughs> <laughs> Shade. Multiple choice. I can provide that. Is it A, Mark 5, B, Mark 7, C, Mark 12, or D, Mark 42? Mark 7. That is correct for one point, and we almost found ourselves in the situation where Keaton could have stolen that if he had gotten it incorrect, but he navigates the question correctly. It is Mark 7 for one point, and so now it's Brandon with 18. Mm. Uh, Chance in second place with 16. Chandra has 15, and we're still waiting for him to mess up so that we can have Keaton with an opportunity to steal. Your penultimate question, Chandra, in round number two, Heroes and Villains, your question is, in Watchmen, who is revealed to ultimately be behind the major villainous activities throughout the film? <clears throat> Mark seven is actually how many five, marks we went through before we found you. Three, <laughs> multiple choice. Two. Thank you for the compliment. <laughs> Your multiple choice options are, is it A, Night Owl, B, Dr. Manhattan, C, Ozymandias, or D, Silk Spectre 2? Ozymandias. Give the man a point. <laughs> Again, maybe not his strongest category, but he took heroes and villains, and now he finds himself with the opportunity to answer one more question and possibly pull even with Brandon Hanna for the lead going into round number three. Your final question in round number two. In the Rocketeer, what? the final battle, <laughs> the final battle between Cliff and Neville Sinclair occurs on what mode of transportation? Multiple choice. <laughs> I can provide that for you. Is it A, a biplane, B, an aircraft carrier, C, a zeppelin, or D, a train? Uh, it was released in 91, so the plane fights were not that popular. I'm going to go to five, <laughs> four, four this is fascinating. three. Train. It is not a train. That is incorrect. So for the steal, need all the competitors to write this down, and this could keep Keaton Markey alive going into round number three. I know. That's what she's hoping for. About five, four, three, two, one. Your options were A, a biplane, B, an aircraft carrier, C, a Zeppelin, or D, a train. I'm going to start with you, Chance. Zeppelin. Zeppelin's correct for a point. Does Keaton have Zeppelin? Nope. Aircraft it's an aircraft carrier. carrier. Does Brandon Zeppelin have it? C Zeppelin. He also had C Zeppelin. And with about? that, we move to round three, and we say goodbye to Keaton Markey. How about a hand for Keaton Markey? Coming back into the inner geekdom in a four-way qualifier. Uh, great to see her again at the desk. And now there were but three, Danielle, as we move into round number three. Ooh. Round number three works like this because we now have three competitors left. You each are going to give us a series of numbers. These numbers range from 1 to 16. We need three numbers from each competitor. These numbers correspond to a different corner of the inner geekdom know-how galaxy. The first question you hear is going to be worth two points. Your next question is worth three points. Your last one is worth five points. These questions are asked to you and only you. There is no stealing in round number three. There is no penalty for missing a question in round number three. Danielle, we find ourselves in the situation with Brandon Hanna 
having mm -hmm. a two-point lead over Chance Ellison, who enjoys a one-point lead over Chandru. So, Brandon, uh, we're going to get your three numbers first. What would you like, sir? Four, eight, and 15. Four, That's so lost eight, and 15. <laughs> Oh, you All sweet right. baby boy. <laughs> and now it's Chance Ellison. What's the range again? Uh, from 1 to 16, sir. Okay, so I'll go uh, 6, 12, 16. All right, sticking with all evens. Interesting all strategy. Evens. Does it throw Chandru off? Chandru, the first time in movie trivia mode on history, I'm going to ask you for your numbers, sir. Uh, 7 for Star Wars Force Awakens, the first Star Wars movie I saw in theaters. I was going to say. Good save. <laughs> I was like, I could hear the nerd screams, I was there, and I was like, no. <laughs> 11, because 7 11 jokes. Okay. And 9. And 9. All right, he also managed to pick the uh, numbers of three Washington Redskins quarterbacks. Look at that, Chandra. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah, so, that's why I picked it. <laughs> thank you, Chandra. Uh, he Appreciate must have that. great lotto numbers. <laughs> so, Chandra, uh, I'll be asking you your series of questions. You selected number 7 for your two point question. And that corresponds to the world of heroes. And your question for two In points. In the Rocketeer. Is. <laughs> <laughs> this movie's a little more recent, but the character might remind some of the Rocketeer. What branch of the military does James Rhodey Rhodes serve in in the MCU? Need a branch of military service. Need an answer in five, four, three, two. Are the Marines? That is incorrect. Looking for the Air Force. The Air Force, like my pappy served in. Oh. All right. My dad was in the Army. Yeah, there, uh, there you go. Army brats, Air Force brats. All right, Chandra, so we're sticking with you for your three-point question now. Uh, you selected number 11, and the number of Mark Rippon corresponds to the DCEU. DCEU. Not sure what it stands for, so I'll just leave it as DCEU. <laughs> Your question. Um, for three points, what two writers are credited for the Justice League screenplay? Whew. Writers. <laughs> we'll go to five. Zack Snyder and Joss Whedon. You got one of them. It was Joss Whedon and Chris Terrio. <sighs> Chris Terrio is who we we're looking for there. Oscar that's winner, a, right Vargo. Oh. Tough question there. And so now Chandru finds himself in the unfortunate position of having to answer his five point correct, or else he too will be eliminated. Chandru, you selected number nine mm -hmm. for your five point yeah. question. And that corresponds to the world of Marvel movies. Okay. Marvel movies. And your question is. In Deadpool 2, what is the name of the Irish inmate of the icebox that confronts Wade and Russell? And we need an answer in five, four, three. Repeat. I can do that. In Deadpool 2, what is the name of the Irish inmate of the icebox that confronts Wade and Russell? Good use of, I believe, his last JTE role. Uh, but he has one more. No, uh, I don't have any more. He, he has no more, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> I paid attention. So, I you're it. honest. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So we'll give you your countdown now. Five. It's not really PC, but it's Black Four. Tom. He got five points on that one, Danielle. <laughs> Staying alive on the desk by this kid. I didn't think he had it, but I he pulls it out there. And now, Ooh, Brandon damn. and Chance, who have been jockeying for the lead for it's most of the game, now they're looking <laughs> up at Chandru, who has 21 points. So now Chance Ellison finds himself trailing the leader by four. So Chance, your question is going to be asked by Danielle, and your two-pointer, you selected number six. And Danielle, that corresponds to what category? Back to the Future. Okay. What is Marty McFly's mother's name? Just need the uh, the first name. Right. We're gonna need an answer in five, four, three, two. The rain. That is correct. It is the rain. Two points. He knew the rain. Way back in 1955, 1985, so it is 19 to 19. They each trail Chandru by two. So now we're going to go to Brandon Hanna. Going to give you your two-point question. 
So you can get some points in round number three, possibly. You selected category number four for your two-pointer, and that corresponds to villains. Villains. And your question is, what United States city was Eric Killmonger from? Oakland. Give the man two points and count him tied with Chandru for Ooh. the lead. This has truly become a horse race. It really oh, has. And now Chance Ellison no, back two. trailing by two. So Chance, you're going to be up next for your three-pointer. And that comes from category number 12, Daniel. And that is the world of The Hobbit. <laughs> who plays dwarf Dane Ironfoot, cousin to Thorin, who shows up in the Battle of the Five Armies to help fight? Three points, this would give him the lead outright for the time being. Go to five, four, three, two. Billy Connolly. That is correct. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, he was, well, that was a game. He was GP playing a little game. He might have been there. having a little bit of fun with a you. So right now, Chance Ellison has vaulted into a one-point lead. Okay. And unfortunately, that does eliminate Chandru. How about a hand? Fantastic Chandru, first game. Don Dapani, what a debut for him. Getting under the white-hot spotlight of the Intergeekdom Division in a four-way qualifier, not even knowing who all his opponents are. Very game effort by a rookie competitor. Hope to see a lot more of him down the road. I cannot wait. But now, the onus is on Brandon Hanna. And Brandon, you are now going to be faced with your three-point question as you trail chance by a mere point. All right, Brandon, you selected category eight for your three-point question, and that corresponds to independent film series known as Star Wars. Very small series. Star Wars. And your question for three points. In Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope, what three words of advice did Luke give C-3PO before leaving to rescue Leia from the Death Star's prison? Three word phrase, I guess we're looking for. Three points and the lead by two. Don't say anything. That is incorrect. Looking for lock the doors. And then Han chimes in and hope they don't have blasters. So Chance still enjoying a one-point advantage over Brandon. And now Brandon faced with that five-point question himself. Brandon's going to come from category 15. You get this right, go back to Chance for his five-pointer. If you get it wrong, then Chance Ellison will be the winner of the four-way qualifier. And this is in the world of Star Trek. In Star Trek Into Darkness, what is the name of Admiral Marcus's massive, unregistered, dreadnought-class starship that was built in secret? The USS Vengeance. That is correct. The crowd knew it, and Brandon Hanna has forced the hand of Chance Ellison to get his five-point question correct. He currently trails by four, so we're not going to have overtime today, Danielle. We're going to be declaring a winner at the end of this very question. Uh, Chance, you selected number 16, okay. Joe Montana's number for your final question in what's going to be the match here today, the four-way qualifier, and that corresponds to the wild, wacky, wonderful world of DC movies. And for five points, your question. Name the only character from the 1978 to 87 Superman movies, so Superman 1 through 4, right. name the only character to make an appearance in the 1984 film Supergirl. One of Be my favorite movies. The name of the character. It's an amazing movie. Is that true? <laughs> it is true. The director's cut is fantastic. So Chance Ellison, going to need an answer in five, four. Repeat the question. Three. I can certainly do that. He's got two JTU rules left. Mm -hmm. Your question was, name the only character from the 78 to 87 Superman movies, movies one through four, to make an appearance in 1984's Supergirl. Otis. And your winner! Brandon! Oh! Hannah! We're looking for Jimmy Olsen, Danielle. Yeah. Jimmy Olsen and the Spin Doctors have a song.
along Jimmy Olsen's Blues. That's going to be Chance Ellison's Blues because Brandon Hanna walks away in his debut with a win in a four-way qualifier that was certainly a barn burner. What do you have to say about Brandon Hanna's performance, Danielle? Um, that was fantastic, and what a great, so many great performances by rookies today. Um, Brandon Hanna can certainly be proud. I fear that he might get a little too proud, um, <laughs> but we'll see how that goes and how this plays out for the rest of his time here at Inagikdom. But he does definitely deserve to give himself a pat on the back. And you, you hit it something that was fun to watch play out throughout this match, is that you start to see characters get formed, characters get fleshed out, because you can come in with one mentality, one mindset, going into your first movie trivia showdown appearance, but you never really know how it's going to play out so you start to see maybe Brandon is he gonna break bad Chandra is he gonna break bad is he gonna break good he had some nice jabs but he was also a lovable figure then you have Chance Ellison returning in a mysterious performance but a very game one as well taking Brandon all the way down to the wire and let's not forget Keaton Markey as well an able performance by all four competitors and now we are gonna have an interview with the winner solo and the three losers of today's match with our own Jen Serger Jen it's all yours so look, guys, that was a monster table you just sat at. Let's be real. I know you were you were cringing the whole time, especially when you didn't get Harry Potter, Keaton. I, that was that was a rough one. Sometimes luck is not on your side. Um, but you know, it's it's been a while since I've sat at that table, and I think with you know a lot of the stuff that has been released lately, I've been really kind of depressed. So oh. <laughs> it's been a it's been a rough uh, week with Endgame. Uh, so yeah, I it was hard to sit down at that table and uh, really really hit it home today. But, you know, great challengers, great competitors now in the league, and um, I can't wait to, you know, maybe have a rematch. Sometime. Honestly, though, I felt like your knowledge had really stepped up. Oh, thank you. Uh, just like, just <laughs> the general knowledge. What it comes well, down you. to, honestly, is playing yeah. the game. And I know that the format's a little weird when there's more than two people out there. So I, I mean, that gets a little intimidating. Yeah, you know, I, I would say this was like the one time I was like, let me just go in there with my knowledge. I didn't like do like a deep study or a deep cram right before um, the days leading up to this match. And, you know, trying to figure out your, your study strategy is, I think, part of the strategy within this uh, inner geekdom. So, yeah. you know, next time I, I think I'm going to come with a little bit you know, more in my back pocket. Absolutely. And I'll just pass this back here. <laughs> Thanks. Chandru, oh my God. <laughs> Where did you come from? Um, originally India, like now I live no, in No, 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 I meant uh, like, how did you get here? <laughs> how did you get here? <laughs> oh, so I actually uh, came to the awards show and uh, I was in the audience and I spoke to Christian after uh, saying how much I love the Schmodown and like how I'd love to take part in the Inner Geekdom match. Do you I know was, how many people do that though and like actually make it through? Not very many, like this is a really rare occasion. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really lucky. Like uh, he just gave me my gave me his email ID and told me to email and apparently he really liked my email. And then, mm -hmm. so he's been asking me to come to the tapings and sit with uh, the matches. Uh, it's been great. Uh, so I usually like just stand in the sidelines and uh, like, enter the answers in the phone just like everybody else and I've been winning so many matches I got the worst <laughs> questions today and I I shouldn't like blame just the questions because I was double guessing myself too with the Yoda I had Yoda and it uh, happens under those lights oh, though man yeah. it's totally different you can answer all the answers in your phone and you can play along at home but there's something about being at a table with other people, people. that are trying to win just mm -hmm. as much as you are that yeah. it just kicks it up a notch. And when someone's counting down five, four, three, two, one, that's the most You're stressful. like, I can count, please stop. <laughs> oh, but seriously, that was a really dominant performance straight out of the gate. And inner geekdom is, besides Star Wars, I think one of our hardest, uh, you know, one of our hardest divisions we have. So the fact that you came in here and made such a dominant first impression, your first debut here, mm -hmm. your debut here, I think that it's nothing to hang your head about. And we're actually really excited to see what you can do if you want to keep coming back. Oh, I would love to come back. I, as I said, I love the Schmodown. I love the Inner Geekdom division specific, especially. And uh, there's some old matches that I need to watch. I need to stop second guessing myself. I'm still kicking myself over the Air Force uh, for Falcon. I know the internet is not going to forgive me ever <laughs> for, forgive me about that. But even if I got those two questions, I would have still been at 25 and not missed it. Yeah, uh, but that was a great five-point pull you had there. Uh, oh, and yeah. Honestly, like, you just felt the room explode when you hit it. <laughs> so this whole room loved you. I'm sure the internet is going to mm -hmm. love you. I love you. Oh, thank Aww. you. <laughs> yeah. So sweet. And, <laughs> yes, and some of the best inner geekdom players, uh, Rachel Cushing, Mike Kelnowski, uh, Hector Navarro, um, who am I missing? Jason, in Jason Inman. They all started with a loss. Don't forget, so they, yeah. yeah. Don't they forget all, Smets. He, he did no, win his debut. I'm talking but about the people who started with a loss yeah. and they came back to win belts. Uh, so um, that's 
they're going to be more my journey too. You better watch out. I'm coming for that thick, thick belt. Oh. <laughs> All right, guys, um, I don't usually have really great things to say about corruption, but I got to hand it to you, uh, Chance. That was a pretty impressive debut in the IG. Yeah, uh, thank you, Jennifer. It uh, wasn't supposed to be in, but I'm glad I, I wasn't supposed to be in this match, but I'm glad I hung in there. In the Wait, end. wasn't supposed to be in? Um, what do you mean? You know, I was, I was here, I was hanging at the beach, get a text message from Emma like, hey, uh, we're throwing you in the inner geekdom. So I'm just like, OK. Whatever, I could take some, I could take two hours to, you know, kick a little ass. So this is what I did, you know, when I haven't studied. This is me coming in, no preparation whatsoever. Wow. Uh, Grace, how did you feel about his performance today? I mean, he performed just as I expected. He did great. He was literally sipping an EG's on the beach doing nothing. We have nerds over here with three inch binders studying all day and he rolls in and lasts till the very end as I knew he would. Are you guys worried at all about him and Kalinowski potentially running into each other at some point if you continue to compete in IG? I mean, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not trying to sell on Mike's toes or anything. This is, this is not about me trying to take opportunities away from Mike. It's about me spreading my dominance, spreading the dominance of corruption as a whole because we are a unit, Jennifer. We do things together and we will dominate this league as a team. Ken, do you have any words? Jen, I'm so glad you're here today. I'm so glad you're all in with us right now. And I got to say this, Jen, uh, everything you've asked and they've answered about Chance, I, I, I believe that as well. The, the kid showed up. He wasn't supposed to be here and competes. But I think we, we know what this is about. We know really what this is about. Skalisku, put down your big thick burger at your Hardy's booth that they have reserved for you, where I know you got your Tandy little laptop open and you're trying to screw corruption. You are trying to ask a question that has been asked since 1985 when the VHS tape of Supergirl was available at places like Movies to Go and rent a movie and have fun renting a movie with your miserable life. I know what you're doing, Skalisku. I worked with you. Uh, Skalisku, uh, Skalisku guy, I know what you've been up to. I know what this is about. And you know what, Jen, to your question about Kalinowski and Chance meeting down the line, you know what we call that? A corruption family barbecue, and we look forward to it. See you around. All right, I guess this is done. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's Skalisko. Yeah. Skalisko. Skalisko. Brandon, congratulations on your win, man. That was incredible. I mean, it came down to you and Chance in the end, and you pulled it out. How does it feel to not only be making a name for yourself in this match, but also to kind of be stepping out of Ben Bateman's shadow? Because until then, we've all kind of known you as just the guy that carries his briefcase. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, Jennifer. Uh, very happy right now. Uh, beating Chance Ellison, I, that feels very good. <laughs> right? I can tell. You can almost quit your day job of selling insurance, right? Uh, you know, it pays the bills. <laughs> but so how does it feel to get that first W under those lights? Uh, it feels great. I just uh, I'm ready to go out there and win again. Well, do you have any idea who you want to face next? Like, what? What was the? I don't even know. Oh, Emma, how's it going? Good. I will uh, let you take this. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, as as we're on the topic of uh, you know Brandon wanting to get more wins, congratulations, Brandon. Excellent performance today. Thank you. Uh, you know, I can't say that there wasn't a little bit of personal investment for me in terms of uh, seeing Chance Ellison get defeated. So. Congratulations, Brandon. You're officially in the Inner Geekdom League. Thank you, Emma. Yes, you're very welcome. Thank you so much, Emma. Yes. I mean, they don't call me the hitman for nothing. I'll take them all out. You feeling still pretty confident about that? I'm feeling very confident. Mm, I still want to go home and get some studying. Well, congratulations again, man. Thank you. Back to you guys. What a fantastic showing for this new rookie. It's fun to watch, too, because obviously Emma Fife, I mean, a, a couple weeks ago, this guy was helping her clean her office at her demand, and then she asked him some Harry Potter questions. He gets thrown into a four-way qualifier, and now we have Brandon Hanna, possibly a new star in the league. But let's not forget about the other rookie debut here today. Chandru with a very able performance. He took it all the way to the three rounds. Didn't work out his way today for him or Chance or Keaton, but a very well-played match here, and I was thrilled to be able to call it with you, Danielle Rad. Where can all the kids at home find you on the social medias? Um, you can find me at Danielle Radford on Twitter. You can find me at Danielle underscore Radford on Instagram. If you like wrestling, I do have a wrestling podcast on Max Fun that comes Tights out weekly fights. called Tights and Fights. Um, you can find me on Screen Junkies, but more than likely you're already doing that. Look at all the stuff she's doing. I'm just here taking naps. My name is Mark Baby Carrots <laughs> Ellis. Make sure you guys join the Movie Trivia Showdown Patreon. we got a whole lot of tiers there. Select which one is right for you. If you get the right one on the $10 level, you can see all of our live Patreon. 
pay-per-view style matches that we have for the rest of the year. All that information at the Schmodownlive.com or TriviaSD.com. For Danielle Radford and Christian Harloff, I'm just Mark, and we'll see you guys next time. Sam? 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 Where are you? Sam? Sam? Sam, where are you at? What the hell is... What the hell is Sam Levine? What? Sam? First of all, why are you here, like back here? I'm on my break. I've been looking for you for like five minutes. You've been here the whole time? Oh yeah, I've been here like an hour 20. Nobody said anything. What's up? Hey man, live your life. Listen, so I know I got to make a choice to represent me in the manager bowl and I finally made a pick mm -hmm. and uh, it's going to be the machine. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah, Janine's great. That's a solid choice. But uh, okay, so you know, if, if, if she wins and you win, she wins. All right, and uh, you get to be my boss. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be cool, right? Because I remember, you know, when you came to me and you were like, I want Kalinowski, what'd I say? You gave it to me like boom. I said boom. Yep. Boom, you got, you got it. it right? You said you wanted a raise, what'd I say? Boom, boom you, you got, got it. it. So, uh, you know. I got you, you'll be good. You want to take a three hour break in the cut, cool. But my question is, mm -hmm. is Emma fair game? Oh, oh yeah, do whatever you want. I mean, say word. Word. Shake on it. Absolutely. You go enjoy the rest of your break. You the man. Thanks, buddy. Commission.